Reality can be stressful, and almost everyone needs an escape from reality. Our main character, Daechai, is just like that. Daechai is a lover of video games. To him, it is his hiding place where he can do whatever he wants and escape from reality. A new game has just been released, and Daechai doesn't want to miss out. He is a 37-year-old company worker who spends most of his time at work and barely has time for himself, but he has decided to dedicate the little time he has to play his games. He starts by setting up his virtual figure naming his virtual personality Earth. When creating a virtual character, the first thing and the most important thing to do is to create how the virtual being would look like. To do that, since he is quite older than most game players, he decides to name his character way younger. He also decides that it is fair that his virtual character should look shorter than he is in real life, and the next part of the game is picking his skills. As a worker, he doesn't have the luxury of time to waste, and he can't have much time to concentrate on the game. As a result, he decides that he would prefer not to have friends or party in the game. The best way to avoid public attention is by picking underrated skills. When people see those skills, they would believe he is weak, and it wouldn't do them any good to associate with them. He starts by picking out a bow. The bow is a very underrated skill in the game. Archers don't get to kill monsters fast, and it really affects their ratings. His aim is that, if he keeps up that way, he will be able to avoid other people while enjoying his game. He picks other skills like wind. Wind is also underrated because it is weak against fire and earth. He also picks kick and sneak. Eventually, he picks about 8 skills, and he sets out for his virtual life. The game is quite simple. It isn't like the other games where you would have to kill a boss or get promotions. In that game, you just have to kill monsters and spend time with others if you wish to. His first day in the game world isn't very great. He feels he could become a hunter, or he could sell weapons and instruments to other hunters, and he can even make magic portions and sell them to hunters. As he arrives at the game world, he is welcomed cheerfully by a seller who asks him if he is a newbie. She asks him to buy his required weapons from him, but before he walks closer to her, he sees some players fighting monsters in the sky. He watches for a while and returns to reality. A huge player comes behind him and hits him. He asks him if he doesn't know that archers aren't in that game and there is no way he can achieve anything great by being an archer. He hits him and falls him off. The other game players refuse to come to his rescue and they all make side comments as regards how they were wise enough to avoid the bow skills. LOL, if only they knew that he intentionally picked it. Among the players, a lady takes a liking to him, but she doesn't approach him. He goes to the training center to train his skills. He starts by training his arching skills, but he is so disappointed in himself. His first attempt flies to the sky, and while he hopes his second and third attempts will be a little better, they even turn out to be worse. He shoots several bows, and after about 100 attempts, his arching skills advance to level 5. He moves to improve his wind skills. After chanting the wind magic skill, he uses the wind needle, and I guess he is more fortunate with that skill because he could use it in his first attempt. He also trains some of his other skills before he decides to go to the field and hunt. Upon getting there, he sees a crowd of people. Everyone wants to kill monsters, and as someone who hates attention, he really can't flourish amid those people, so he takes his loss for that moment and decides to get herbs. He uses his long distance vision skill in the forest to find herbs that are around. He takes some of them, but he doesn't know what the herbs are for. He takes them to the city so he can use his appraisal. After several failures, he succeeds in finding out what the herb is, and he sees it as a suffocation herb. What a waste of time, I mean, who really needs suffocation herbs? He continues by going to the portion store and looking for portions to make medicine. He buys all the materials he needs and takes them home to make. The procedures to make medicines are quite simple, and he gets it, but he is disappointed with how low the efficiency of his medicine is. Medicines are sold for less, and no one would buy from him. He decides to go hunting again, and this time, the field is empty. He sees a horned rabbit around, and he tries to use his bow. The best step to success as an archer is getting your first bow right, so he sets his bow, but the rabbit sees him and escapes. He succeeds in shooting the rabbit on his second attempt, and the injured, angry rabbit forges at him in anger. He decides to use his kick to finish the rabbit, and he kills it. Two game players see him and come to meet him. One of them, Sway, laughs at how dramatic Earth was while trying to kill the horned rabbit and says he hasn't seen anyone make those awful sounds because of rabbits before. The other lady, Millie, who had taken a liking to him earlier, asks if they could send a friend request to him, and they send the request. Later, he tries to hunt another rabbit, but the rabbit finds him and runs. He eventually uses his wind skill to kill the rabbit. He wonders if he could figure out a way to hide from the rabbit, and he remembers his sneak skill. He combines his sneak skill with his arching, and he gets his first hit with a bow. His first day seems to be a success, and he eventually logs out to rest. 
although that is the time most game players enjoy the game. He has to go to work the next day, and he needs to rest. Later at the marketplace, Earth buys bread from an NPC and finds the taste to be rather bland. So, he becomes disappointed in the game design and wonders if there will ever come a day when a player will be able to taste in-game food that actually tastes like food inside a VR game. But according to Earth, food that is only created by NPCs tastes like garbage. And theoretically, if a player makes their own food, it apparently tastes like the actual thing. So, to test out the theory, Earth grabs a frying pan and a knife, along with many other kitchen utensils. He also grabs his seasonings and the cooking set, including the cooker and the other stuff. After making the preparations, Earth puts steak-sized rabbit meat on a sizzling fan and lets it fry first to see if his efforts are going to fruition. He seasons the steak with salt and pepper, and once it's done, he serves the cooked steak on a plate. He cuts it with no anticipation as to how it is going to taste, and gives the steak a bite. At that moment, a disgusting flavor hits him hard, and that causes the system menu to pop up which also expresses its disgust, giving the steak a 2 out of 10 rating. Still, Earth doesn't give up on his hopes of making a tasty meal and tries once again to cook a perfect steak. This time, he cuts the raw meat and prepares it properly first. Then he follows up by putting some herbs in, like rosemary, to give it a more exquisite taste. This time, although the steak looks more tender, it cannot be judged too prematurely. Fortunately, Earth actually finds the steak to be rather delicious and juicy, but it still gets a score of 5 by the system, meaning that there is still room for improvement. So, he gets more determined to get the perfect score and boils the next serving first before frying it on the pan. This time, the steak becomes so tantalizing that its herbaceous aroma attracts the people in its surroundings. The smell of the steak spreads throughout the area quickly, making all of the people wonder why they are smelling something like this in an alleyway. Even though the crowd loves the steak by smelling the aroma, the system only gives the steak a score of 7. Earth seems to be happy with it, and as he calls it a day, the crowd who got attracted earlier comes there asking for a piece of that meat for themselves. They even offer to pay Earth, so he, like the humanitarian he is, begins to cook for everyone present there. After spending the entire evening in this cooking hell, Earth manages to satisfy everyone's needs and, at the same time, gains enough points to level up his cooking skill to level 20. Because he reached this milestone, the system gave him a cooking promotion. Thanks to that, he gets the ability to cook at high speed and escapes the hell of serving everyone for eternity. Later at his house, Earth begins to make a bow as he is, at the end of the day, an archer. Since there is no demand for bows in the market, he takes the initiative to make one for himself and begins to cut down a piece of wooden stick. After sewing down more wood and sanding the final bented product, Earth adds some oil to make the crease a little slippery. Then he adds some grips for the part where he will hold the bow with his hands and tie the string that will release the arrows. After doing that, he gets the final product, a wooden arrow. He asks the system to give it a rating, and so the system gives it a score of 3 and an attack of 4. Since its attack is almost mid-tier, Earth gets a bit relieved, as his bow is at least a little better than a beginner player's basic bow. After playing with the bow for a while, Earth decides not to procrastinate and plans to make a more complex bow by compiling three pieces of wood together. By putting together hard and flexible material, he makes a prototype compound wooden bow and gets an attack of 12, which is way higher than his first bow. Since this is a big improvement, Earth gets satisfied with what he has made and proceeds to prepare for his next gear, proper armor. He quickly heads to an armor shop and buys a rather fashionable yet not so durable looking armor in exchange for a hefty amount of money. But still, the system shows that his stats have increased a little due to equipping the armor, so Earth becomes happy once again. He suddenly remembers that he has some business to attend to and explains that since he has used a lot of money to buy this armor, he is also trying to earn some cash by doing some side business. So, he heads into the wilderness to get some loot and hunts a wolf using his new bow. After taking out multiple spiders and wolves, he gathers a pile of materials and heads back to sell them. After a while, the players get brutally attacked by a new system out of nowhere and become desperately in need of potions. Seeing the sudden commotion, Earth calls his only friend's way to hear what's going on and learns that the NPCs have run out of potions, which is why the players are trying to buy potions from other players. Thanks to Earth's plot armor, he has the ability to make potions, and since he has already revealed that ability to the players earlier, they begin to surround him, begging him to make them some potions. So, Earth takes the responsibility again to become the only savior of this game and begins to work hard once again. After making a bunch of potions, Earth eventually runs out of medicinal herbs. So, he ends his potion making session for today and calls it a day.
But before he can take his leave, some bullies, along with the guy with flashy armor named Weird, approach him, demanding all of Earth's potions as if all of them are rightfully his. However, Earth is not a pushover, so he compliantly ignores Ward and makes it clear to him that the entire server of players is in support of him currently. And so, if this annoying guy tries to do something annoying, he will have to pay for it. Still, Ward remains as ignorant as ever and sent Earth a PvP request to get this over with. Since Earth himself doesn't want a bully like Ward to boss everyone around, he accepts his PvP request and shows him who the boss is. He instantly finishes him off with his archery skills and reveals that he is no longer the weakling that he was when he started playing this game. After this satisfying moment, Earth takes his leave from the game and logs out for the day. After several days of being away from the virtual world, he finally gets a break from work and he wants to return to the game. He has realized that medicine skills are no longer left behind, and it is now part of the most sought after skill in the virtual world. The reason for that is because the NPCs have realized that they can run out of healing and they would have to resort to the use of medicine to survive. That doesn't seem like a worry to him, but he also doesn't want to call much attention to himself in the game world. He wears his helmet and enters the virtual world where he meets Sway and Millie. He had conversed with them earlier about joining a party with them, and Sway tells him he is with the members of the Blue Party. He knows Millie before, so the other members of the group introduce themselves. The first to introduce herself is Nora. She looks so tiny with few physical qualities, and he wonders why she looks that way. Before he could give a remark, Sway helps him out by telling him that he shouldn't make any remark that could make her get angry. She is a melee fighter who uses a short arrow. The next member of the party is Rage. He wears armor to cover himself, and he also uses melee. Kay's mind also introduces himself. As he is about to introduce himself, they all tell him they don't need him to do anything. They claim they all know him, and he has been the talk of the entire game for weeks. He is shocked about this, he has been trying to keep a low profile, and that popularity isn't what he wants. They claim they know he is an archer, and he wonders how stories of himself spread across the nation. Sway reminds him of the fight he fought previously and how he was able to defeat a great monster. When people watched him, they assumed he had a shitty weapon and there was no way he could win that fight but they saw how he directed his weapon, and they realized he was so strong. He is angry that he can no longer keep his low profile, but he consoles himself with the fact that he now has a party, and the attention won't be all over him alone. On second thought, he wonders if that team is really a team and if the team can stand. He reminds Sway that they have about four melee fighters in the party and just an archer. He wonders if that party has equal strength and if they can survive in battles. Nora understands his concern, but she tells him that most of them have other skills that they use with their major skills. She claims she uses healing skills, while Millie can also use other magics. As a result, they will be fine no matter the kind of monster they fight against. He gets more relaxed and asks what the mission for the day is. Sway is a little more confident about their skills. He tells him they will hunt wild boar, which shocks Earth because he doesn't know where they have gotten the confidence to hunt such a wild monster. He explains to them that he has heard a lot about wild boars, and they aren't as simple as they think they are. Sway insists that he is sure of their skills, and he knows they can survive. He thinks about what they could be relying on, and even before he talks, they tell him they trust in his ability, and they are sure he would help them out. He doesn't even have that much confidence in himself. He is nothing but an archer. How would an archer defeat such a monster? He wonders if the idea of joining a party is a good one and if he won't regret it eventually. At that moment, Sway tells him that he wants them to have a party meal after their hunting, and Earth will prepare the meal. This is a breaking point for Earth because the responsibility of a party is already much more than he had thought. He tries to refuse the offer, and they walk away to start their hunting. They go to the boar forest, and they see several boars. They conclude that boars walk in groups, and it would be rare for them to find one that is alone. Luckily, Earth uses its long range to find another boar, it is alone, and they target it. Earth ought to hit the boar with his arrow, and he uses his sneak to hide behind the boar. He hits the boar, but he doesn't hit a weak point. The boar gets furious and turns. Rage takes over from Earth, and Earth goes into hiding. Rage hits the boar so the boar can change the direction of his range towards Rage. The monster is angry at. If they direct it to Rage, since Rage has nightwear, he would be able to take the attacks. The effect is minimal since Rage's armor covers him. When Rage's HP reduces, Millie uses her cure skill to cover up for him, and Nora also adds her healing power. Nora jumps at the boar the night. She realizes the boar's skin is too thick, and there is no way she can penetrate it. On the other hand, as Millie uses taunts to taunt the boar and get his attention, while Millie uses backstab to stab the boar. 
they realize that there is no way they can defeat the Borg. That realization is <laughs> the Borg with them. And if they can't defeat it, the Borg will kill them. Zwei's confidence enters the drain. He apologizes to his party members for putting them in that kind of trouble. But they really doubt an apology can cut in at that point. Seeing how the entire issue is going, Earth thinks of what he could do to help the team. He has to find the Borg's weak point to shoot the arrow directly at the weak point. He needs to use his several years of experience and make a decisive decision about what to do, and that doesn't seem easy. He decides to shoot the middle of the boar's eyes because they should be the weak point. He admits that if he finds it difficult to save his team from that issue, it really means he isn't meant to be with them, and a party isn't meant for him. His pessimistic approach really came into play, as when he hits the boar, the boar doesn't die. Instead, it gets the boar more furious at him, and they almost resign to fate. He decides to take the last step of faith, the last skill which he can use to defeat the monster. It is a skill that he has mastered for a while and which he could only use for about 10 seconds. He activates the wind skill, and he runs with a very high wind and jumps at the boar. He kicks the arrow into the boar's skull, and the boar gets weak. Millie ends the entire battle by using her fire magic. The boar scatters into thin air, and they are relieved. Sway regrets putting that kind of burden on their head. He apologizes for thinking they could defeat such a boar, but Earth tells him it is really not a worry and they are fine regardless. He tells them that they should come and eat because he has brought a great meal. He cooks meat and puts it on sticks, then shares it with the party members. They eat the food happily and appreciate him because it is really tasty. However, he gives Sway bread. He claims he feels Sway likes comedy and he would enjoy eating bread which doesn't go so well with Sway, and he protests. Eventually, he gives Swedge his meats, and Nora also asks him if the recipe for that food is expensive. He explains to Nora that the recipes aren't really expensive, but they are to be found everywhere because there is a rule among the creators that stops it from being shared with anyone who asks for it. The reason is because recipes are very difficult to make and they are stressful. Also, even if they are shared, two people can make the same recipe using the same ingredients, which would taste differently. To avoid all these issues, it is best they make a decision that it shouldn't be shared. Nora wonders if he could sell to her, but he refuses, so Zwei tells her she doesn't have to worry because they are a party, and Earth will always make meals for them. Earth doesn't want to do that, but they don't give him any opportunity to talk. Zwei asks them if they are all happy that Earth is on their team, and they are so happy. They end their adventuring that day, and they return home. However, Earth continues to hunt, and he dies. He gets the penalty and screams. You may wonder how he had gotten to that situation. After he left his party member, he decided to hunt by himself, and he fought some monsters. After killing some monsters, he sees the forest in the fifth area before him. He decides to go there and kill more monsters. He sees an ant, and he tries to shoot it, but the ant escapes, and his arrow hits a rock ant. The rock ant breaks the arrow but gets furious and calls his friends. They all come to attack Earth, which assumes that he still has a chance if he can fight them. He tries to use his kick and hits the rock ant, but the ant nullifies his effect, and he finds it difficult to move his leg. He dies, and he gets a penalty. He is thrown into another city, and he wonders if he would survive. He gets a system update on the system, and he sees that the developers are introducing the fairy ball. It is going to be a competition, and it will start with a fairy. Earth sees that the other players are happy, and he knows they will all try to level up. But since he is on penalty, he can't level up. He takes it upon himself to pay the price of his penalty, after which he learns how to be a blacksmith, and decides to make an arrow that can pierce into the body of a rock ant. He creates an arrow shaped like a pyramid in hopes of revenging against the rock ants. He also recalls that he couldn't use his kick because they had a defense that nullified him, and he had to defeat the defense. He knows legs don't have defense, so he creates a boot with spikes and blades, which he could use to step on the rock ants and kill them. He successfully does this, and all the people who see him are shocked he could create such an innovative boot. He also goes to buy bow strings. He has improved his archery to level 30, and he needs to specialize. He wants to change his bow, and he wonders what he should create. He has the option to go for either a short bow, long bow, or hunting bow. However, although short bows are easy to use, their impact is quite low. On the other hand, long bows aren't very easy to use, which leaves him with the option of creating a hunting bow that looks like an X shape. He creates it, and he tests it. He names it an X-type compound hunting bow. He returns to the field to fight the rock ants. He attacks them and kills all of them. He feels satisfied because he has gotten his revenge. He drags their remains to the city, and he gets a notification that the first step of the fairy ball is out, and they are given a contract crystal to create a contract with a fairy. 
Earth is so excited about this that he hopes he will get a wind fairy to help his bow skills. Unfortunately, his crystal cracks and he doesn't get a fairy. At about the same time, Sway calls him. He goes to Sway and tells Sway that he didn't get a fairy. He asks Sway if he has one and Sway shows him his fairy. He looks at his other party members and he realizes he is the only one who didn't get a fairy. He feels very bad and Millie consoles him that it is only the first stage and the second stage could be better. Also, Millie tells him that since the crystal didn't disappear then, it means he could later get a fairy, so he shouldn't get too discouraged. However, he notices that all the other fairies are attracted to him, and he plays with them. He hopes that he will also get his fairy at the second stage. Although Earth doesn't have any fairy, he notices that all the fairies he finds around him love his attention. They would always come around him and try to play with him, and as he sat under the tree, another fairy came to meet him. He wonders if the fairy wants to create a contract with him but says that he can't create a contract with any fairy because he doesn't have a crystal. He brings out his broken crystal and shows it to the fairy, who jumps around it and has fun. He notices that the fairy is having fun, so he allows him to continue that way without disturbing him at all. After resting for a while, he decides to go on his first dungeon raid. When he enters the dungeon, he recalls that as a child, he had always fantasized about going to places like that and he always visited any time he had the opportunity. However, growing up, there were many things he would like to do that he couldn't do, and that made his life very dull until the game came, and he could actualize anything he couldn't do normally. He is excited about the idea of entering a dark dungeon without knowing what he should expect. The anticipation that things would get more precise or worse makes it more lovable for him, and he loves that adventure. He uses his long-range vision to see any danger zone in front of him and he is lucky to avoid one danger zone that is lurking around him. He is glad he could find that danger zone before it is too late, and he escapes it. He keeps walking until he sees a monster. The monster shines his red visions at Earth. Earth, in return, starts to fight. He shoots his arrow at the ant, but the ant recovers speedily. He also uses his wind magic to control his arrow, but that doesn't work, so he decides to use his long jump. He jumps as high as he can, aiming that he will hit the ant on the head. But the dungeon is short, so he hits his head on the edge of the wall. He thinks of what else he could do, and he eventually uses a rope to drag the ant towards him and kicks the ant with his spike boot. The ant eventually dies, and he learns one new thing, which is that when he is in an enclosed space, he can't use long or high jump because he may injure himself. He takes the reward of his hunting and notices some bright lights lurking around him. He recognizes them as darkness fairies although he knows that he can't contract with them. He sees that they are all walking in one direction, and they want him to keep following them. Left with no other choice, he follows the fairies and wonders where they are taking him. They take him towards some tiny roads, which he admits that he wouldn't be able to pass if not because he had upgraded his stable center of gravity. With his leveled up stable of gravity, he can pass any tiny place without any inconvenience. He eventually gets to where the fairies are taking him, and he notices that all the fairies are surrounding just one item, and he wonders what the item is. He goes there, and he sees a door. Upon opening the door, he finds a box. The box looks valuable, and he can foresee that there is something really expensive in the box. That is another thing that makes him like the virtual world. The fact that you can meet anything unexpected and the adventure that comes with it. He opens the box and sees a ring. He doesn't know what the ring could be used for, but he decides to take it as a souvenir from his journey. He appreciates the fairies for taking him there, and he gets a system notification. Upon reading it, he sees that the next stage of the fairy tournament has started, and he goes to the open field where the other players are so they can listen to the general announcement. The fairy battle tournament is going to start with a special PvP battle. This means players would fight against each other to win points and the top 15 players would join the official tournament, which would take place in a battleground, and win great prices. Also, the fairies now have an upgraded quality, and they have the self-identity unlock. The fairies can now upgrade themselves when they see fit. Another improvement that has been brought is a second chance for players like Earth who weren't able to use their crystal, as it is said that their crystal would be upgraded. Also, there will be new titles for players, and everyone would be able to see the titles. While everything seems great to Earth, he feels the entire idea of a PvP would buy craftsmen in trouble. This is because other players would want to confront craftsmen who don't like fighting so they would get PvP points. He hopes players won't start ambushing each other for points. He goes to the blacksmith shop, where he meets Blacks. Blacks have the same concern as him, but tell him that he doesn't have to worry because the Association of Craftsmen has decided that if any player confronts them, they will report to each other and fight the battle together. That way, players would learn to avoid them. He also asks Earth if he has gotten to the new town, the town of Nexia. 
That is the town where the tournament would be taking place, and they have specified a place where players who are interested in PvP can stay and fight their battles. Earth wonders if Blacks are also interested, but Blacks claim he is fine with his blacksmithing job. Earth also thinks of what to do during the tournament since he is also not interested in PvP. He returns to the game, and he realizes that new titles have been added. He sees some people talking about his title, and when he checks it, he sees he has gotten the title Fairy Playa. The title is so annoying, and he is angry because everyone can see it. Fortunately, there is a clause to remove the title, and he has to fight a player. The player nominates herself to fight him, but her fairy refuses to join the fight. He realizes no one would fight him, and he starts begging for someone to fight him since he doesn't want the title. Since no one on the server wants to PvP with the fairy player Earth, he wonders if it is okay for him to force a fairy into a fight. But as none of them shows any intention to battle, Earth gives up on trying and accepts his fate. He curses the game masters for cursing him with such a dumb skill and also vents out his anger on Rona. To calm himself down, Earth chooses to do some cooking, and as he puts the stove on, he puts some meat inside. Rona calls him over using system communication and tells him that she is greatly in need of a word of advice. Although Earth's face says he isn't interested at all, he agrees to help her out of his extreme politeness. He presumptuously asks Rona if she is facing any troubles because her mighty eagle from Angry Birds isn't eating anything or something. And Rona reveals that is the exact problem, which has created a growing concern in her, making her wonder why she is not liking any of the food that she is giving her. She believes that her shining golden Mr. Picky needs a change of taste and asks Earth to make something for her fairy, as he is world-renowned cheap Gordon Ramsay. Earth can't believe that this is happening to him and reveals that almost half of the server is facing the same issue and has already made a long line in front of his house, asking him to make some food for their fairies. So, when Earth was cooking those meats, he wasn't actually doing it for his own satisfaction, but because he was a selfless humanitarian. Rona asks Earth why these things are happening to the fairies and hopes for an answer for him, as she thinks that this is the know-it-all. Well, Earth actually reveals the root of this situation and tells Rona that a player came to him first, saying that his fairy stopped eating the bread that NPCs sell. And assuming that it is because the bread tastes like absolute garbage, Earth decided to make the man's fairy a beautiful marbled steak out of pity and soon realized that was about to become his biggest mistake today. As a proud chef, Earth helped his first customer, Mr. Brighter Forehead Than My Future, and consequently made more for many other people. As word spread that Earth is doing charity again, making food for players' pets, they began forming a line, demanding theirs. To decrease the pressure, Earth decreased the amount of food he would give per serving, but that wasn't enough to make them go away. The only good move in this case was to add hefty prices to his food, but since he isn't a selfish bandit, he chose to sacrifice himself in order to please others, and hence, he is now making food for the entire time. Hearing the story, Rona decides to help him out, and after serving everyone equal shares of their food, they take a moment of relief and rejoice. Earth thanks Rona for helping him out selflessly, but she thinks that wasn't a selfless act at all since she got some food for her parrot fairy in return. So, she thanks Earth for being such a kind person and decides to close the shop for today. Now that the cooking part is done, Earth decides to check out the new patch of the game and goes to the next town with Rona to do so. As they teleport to the new town of Nexia, Rona shows Earth the place where players are doing standard PvP in a fixed arena. As they close in their distance to have a better look at the PvP, Earth sees that the two players are using their fairies as Pokémon to get an upper hand, but the players in this case also fight and parry each other with their swords. As the Copper Man gets the upper hand for a moment, he commands his wolf spirit to blast his opponent with a fire blast attack, but since the wolf isn't Charizard, it doesn't do that and disobeys Copper Man. On the other hand, the fairy of his opponent listens to its master and attacks the Copper Man with a thunderbolt, which is super effective and the blonde guy finishes the fight with a blow to the copper man's heart, killing him instantly. Rona doesn't understand why the copper man's pet didn't obey his orders and asks Earth what he thinks of this since he is the fairy playa. Earth explains that the copper man is probably abusing his fairies, and that is why his wolf fairy has stopped listening to him. Earth also mentions that if a fairy gets abused too much, it turns against its master and fights against him in its fiercest form. So now that Copper Man is abusing his wolf fairy, Earth thinks that the worst may happen. But because of Earth's vital information, he controls himself and lets his wolf fairy be for the moment. Now that the entertaining part is over, Earth decides to log off and bids his goodbyes to Rona. He returns to the game world the next day and gets visited by the Copper Man, 
who looks to be in quite a dilemma, and since Earth has the title of being the fairy man, the copper man explains that is why he has come to seek his wisdom. Apparently, he wants to make up with his fairy and claims that the only reason he was abusing it was because he saw some videos where other players did the same. Hearing that, fairy man gives the advice to treat his fairy as his friend, just like Ash does, and only then can he become a true fairyman master. With Earth's guidance, Copper Man successfully befriends his wolf fairy and thanks Earth before leaving his premise. At that moment, an old man named Silver approaches Earth, saying that he needs to have a private talk with him. Resuming the game world as a fairy player with no fairy to himself didn't turn out to be easy. Well, Earth had never imagined it would be easy for him regardless. On this day, he receives a weird visitor. The visitor is someone he doesn't know before, so he tries to assume who the person is by looking at his dress. The player has a very good costume on himself, and he has a great defense item. It doesn't take Earth a great time for him to assume who the person is. He assumes his visitor has to be one of the greatest and strongest players in the virtual world because for him to afford all that he is putting on, he must be top of the league. He wonders what the man could have come to tell him, and he listens to his discussion. The man asks him if he knows a man named Glad. Earth has never heard of the name before, nor has he come into contact with such a person. He replies in negation, and the man seems pleased to hear that. He wonders why the man thinks he could know Glad, so he asks who Glad is. The man tells him that Glad is a former member of his party. Although Glad has very bad behavior, he is actually a very talented tanker. His strength gets a hold of him whenever he behaves irrationally. Earth connects the dots and realizes that for that man to visit him, Glad is no longer at his party, so he asks to know why Glad left the party. The man informs Earth that he heard Glad is out for fairy play players, and he has been trying to challenge them on PvP, even whether they are interested or not. To answer Earth's question, the man asks his fairy to come out. His fairy is a very beautiful light Valkyrie, and immediately Earth sees it. Earth is in awe of how awesome the fairy looks. The man tells Earth that being a top party member, Glad is known to bully the other party members and make them feel like they are nothing. His strength speaks for him, and it continues like that till the event starts. When the new event starts and all the party members get their fairy, it turns out Glad is the only one who didn't get a fairy. He gets jealous of the other members of the party, especially because he thinks he is stronger than them and he deserves better than them. He can't take the humiliation of being left behind, so he attacks them. As the leader of the party, the man has to protect his other members, so he sends Glad out of his party. However, when the modification was made to the game, and a new crystal was sent for people who didn't get a fairy, Glad was lucky to get a new crystal, and he got a fairy. He got a Darkness Fox fairy, and he makes it a duty for himself to fight against anyone with the fairy playa. Earth figures that Glad couldn't get over the humiliation despite the fact that he has gotten a fairy. The man thinks it is his fault that Glad is like that, and he doesn't want anyone to get hurt because of his fault, so he has taken it upon himself to warn everyone who deserves to be warned about Glad. He says he would have to challenge Glad to a duel eventually and bring Glad to order, but before then, Earth should be very careful, and he should watch out for Glad. Earth appreciates the man for his advice, and he sees the man off. After the man leaves, he thinks of what he has heard. He knows it is not advisable for him to make a decision based on one part of the story, but it would be better if he at least watch out for the man named Glad so he wouldn't fall victim. He decides to go hunting in the field. One of the most important rules in the game is that no player is allowed to challenge another player on a PvP when the player is hunting, so he decides that even if he meets Glad there, Glad can't do anything to him. He takes it upon himself to hunt every time to save himself from doom. He tries to kill a wild boar. He first shoots the boar with his arrow by the middle of his eyes but the boar gets furious and tries to attack him back. He combines his wind magic and his arrow magic, then jumps towards the boar and hits the boar with his spike boot. The boar dies immediately, and he takes the meat. He realizes that he has gotten better with his kick, and he even upgrades his kick art. He appreciates the new upgrade in the game because it made the game easier to understand. The following day, he goes to the town of Nexia to hunt for some metal. He breaks the rocks to find metals, and he eventually sees an explosive ore. He announces to the other people to be careful because he knows if he makes a mistake while carrying the ore, it could explode. He carries it carefully and puts it in a bag before informing the others that they can continue what they are doing. They all talk about how delicate an explosive ore is and how it could kill them all. He goes to Blacks to lend Blacks Smithy. While Blacks wonder what he wants to create again, Blacks call him weird for his creations. He wants to create a new arrow for himself and a metal whip. He wants a twister arrow that can stab and create injury to any animal. He tries to twist the metal, but he finds it very difficult, and after trying it out over the night, he successfully does it and names it a twister arrow. He also creates a new whip, making the triangle blade whip. 
Lax arrive the following day and see his wonderful creations. He tells him he has done well, and Earth leaves. Earth goes to the formation shop to find a hidden place to work on the explosive ores. He is directed to the basement because if it explodes there, it can't injure anyone else but him. He wants to try out his medical skills by creating some explosive portions. He creates about three portions and takes them to an open field to test them. At the field, he throws the first portion, but it doesn't explode. When he throws the second portion, it explodes so hard that it destroys the entire area and also drains about 80% of his HP. He feels that portion would be too hard for him, but in a situation where he is fighting and he is almost dead, he could use it, so he names it the Hell Mine Oil. He tries the last one, which is moderate enough for him. He names that the Enhance Oil. He goes on to use the Enhance Oil to kill some monsters. He first throws it, then uses his bow to finish them. It makes his work so easy that he levels up his wind and arrow skill to level 50. Following his leveling up, he gets a notification that he can combine his wind and arrow magic together. The system asks if he really wants the offer, and he picks yes and then goes to try out his new skill. After hunting wild bears, Japanese Oppenheimer tries out his new Gatling arrows on a poor tree and attacks it as if he is using a burst life. After testing out the Gatling arrows and realizing that his skills are too low to have perfect aim when using this technique, Earth moves on to the next trick he has learned and uses his skill called Fly, which lets him fly, or more specifically, leap forward for a moment. Earth explains that he is actually using wind magic on his feet before jumping, which gives him more momentum, and that is why he looks like he has drank a jump potion or something. Now that Earth feels satisfied with the practice session, he returns to the city and heads to the marketplace first to use the bear loot he collected today for better armor. The shop owner gets impressed seeing how many skins their regular customer has brought today. She assumes that he wants better edge gear. Earth states that he wants to reduce how much damage he takes from the rear and asks her to do some magic with her stuff so that his armor on his backside isn't terribly defenseless like women's armor, which is typically just a bra. The system suddenly sends an announcement in the sky to all players that the game developers are officially done with the scoring for the previous Fairy PvP event, and that it is now time to announce who the winner is. Sway comes there, giving Earth the bad news that nobody from their guild made any real progress, which means that their guild won't probably come close to the leaderboards. More importantly, there are only 16 slots to enter the actual Fairy PvP tournament, so Earth doesn't think that they ever stood a chance anyway. So, he tells Sway not to worry about this event anymore but he himself decides to listen to the system announcing the players who have earned the right to enter the final tournament. And surprisingly, he notices that the old man in the knight armor named Silver, who warned him about the fairy player Hunter Glad, is on the list, and Glad himself is on the list as well. Because Earth knows how much of a dispute both Silver and Claus have, he wonders what will happen in this tournament and if it's going to cause the two players' relationship to deteriorate even more. He imagines these two pros going against each other in battle, and that sense of excitement makes him want to see their fight even more. Soon after, the real tournament begins at a beautifully animated arena with no CGI use whatsoever, and the NPC host of the tournament welcomes everyone for coming to the special tournament server, implying the tournament is taking place on a different server and not in the actual game. Anyway, the host hopes that everyone will enjoy the show today and encourages everyone to cheer for the fighters who will be fighting for the winning troop. Earth, Sway, and Millie sit together in the stands, rooting for no one because they don't know who the contestants are, except for Earth, of course, as he is acquainted with Silver. Even though Earth is sitting way far from the actual arena because he is cheap and bought the cheapest tickets here, but thanks to his thousands of skills and abilities, he finds a relevant skill to enhance his vision named Long Distance Vision, and as he activates it, holographic cool sunglasses appear on his eyes, letting him zoom in clearly in the long distance. Being a fairy player, Earth first looks for other fairy players and feels glad that there are actually other people who are suffering from success just like him. Shortly after, the host begins the first battle, and as it ends with two high-level plot irrelevant players going at it, Earth claims that he wouldn't have stood a chance if he somehow entered this tournament because of how weak he and his fairy would be in comparison to the two fighters who are currently battling against each other. As the blue Aquaman wins the battle and kills the unfortunately weak guy, he showcases his penguin fairy's beauty to everyone and makes them cheer him on. More crazy battles like this happen that don't get animated because of the budget, and of course there is the possible copyright strike by Nintendo for using their cash cow, which is Pokemon. Finally, in the plot, the relevant final match comes between Silver with his Valkyrie fairy and Glad, the egoistic self-proclaimed fairy hunter. They talk trash to each other before their fight begins, and as the host rings the bell, Silver tells Glad that he will discipline him today. Glad gladly accepts the challenge, and because they are both former party members, they seem to know a lot about each other, including what type of attack moves they use. While the old man is using a battle axe, Glad tries to overpower him using his Claymore Greatsword. That's when Silver's Valkyrie comes to lend him some support and fires her fairy attack at Glad. 
but Glad's wolf fairy stops Valkyrie's attack with its own energy blast, and so the crazy battle continues in a stalemate. Sway finds it absolutely amazing that the top two fighters can go to such a level and gets left totally speechless. Earth wonders what Silver intends to do here since he promised that he would take responsibility for what will happen. Silver's Valkyrie looks to be quite the help, as she does her best to distract Glad so much that Silver gets the time to charge his signature attack on Nguyen Crescent, and uses it against Glad. But Glad, at the nick of time, dodges the attack using a move called Wind Boost and moves away, leaving both Silver and Earth in complete disbelief. Earth specifically cannot believe that Glad also knows how to use Wind Magic and realizes that this is going to set the difference between these two fighters. That does seem to be the case, as Glad successfully lands his signature attack cross line on Silver and finishes both him and his fairy, winning the tournament pretty easily. With this win, Glad's wolf evolves into an actual fairy and tells him that she cannot allow him to have another moment of success. She informs everyone about the purpose of this event, which was to select the next ruler of the fairies, and since it is clear that Glad is not the most worthy one to be the ruler, she decides to leave his side, telling him that he is only obsessed with revenge. Now that she has become the fairy queen after winning the tournament, she no longer wishes to be treated as a tool, but Glad doesn't want to let her go and decides to fight her to restrain her from her freedom. Obviously, that is a big mistake by him because the fairy queen reveals herself to be a master of all elements, blasts Glad with all her magical powers, and leaves him alive at 1 HP to make him look even more petty. With the fairy queen attaining her freedom, she summons the three fairy players to the stage, including Earth, and gives them a reward for not making their fairies fight like Pokemon. But because Earth is a special case, the fairy queen tells him with a big, wicked smile on her face that he will have to fight her. That's it for this video, guys. If you liked my recap of this one, let me know in the comments. And kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you the recaps of the next episodes of this exciting fantasy anime series. Until next time, stay safe and take care.